Hey guys, welcome back. I recently added a new simplified portal system to the Hubworld MMO project. So let's take a look at how it works. First, we need to talk about zones. Portals are useless without zones. Zones can be an entire Unreal Engine map, or they can be just part of an Unreal Engine map. Zones do not have to be contiguous, and they can technically even overlap, though I don't think there's really a good case for that. Zones can be inside other zones. This is useful for putting a city zone inside a larger wilderness zone. The size of a zone can be used to give the illusion of different population densities. What we did in ITER is that we realized that, okay, if we can only get 60 players into a zone, then we want to make our city zones smaller so that we take those 60 players and we put them closer together and give the illusion of a higher population density. But then when it comes to the wilderness zones, we can make those much larger so that we spread those 60 players out and have a lower population density. Zones can also be used to manage AI CPU load. So because our zone server instance is also managing the AI of our mobs and our enemies, that takes a CPU toll. The more AI mobs we have in a map, or in a zone, then that's the we're going to not be able to support as many players in that zone. And so you may want to think about your zone size and where your zone covers and how many AI mobs are going to be in that area so that you can properly manage the worst case scenario. Hopefully you would be using some kind of mob spawning system where AI mobs that are not being interacted with by players are not actually taking up any processing power. But even then you have to think about the worst case scenario. Okay, if we have 60 players, what's the maximum number of AI mobs that they might be interacting with in a worst case scenario? And you have to make sure to account for that. Portals are used to connect one zone to another. Portals only work in one direction. If you need both directions, you must use two portals. Now we're going to take a look at what that looks like in a bit here. Portals have a starting location and starting rotation to set where you end up in the destination zone. They also have a zone name. So if you go into the BP folder, you'll see there's this new folder called portals. And this is where we'll be storing any different portals that we might create. These are BPs. And I have a new one here called box portal. Underneath that, what we have is we have this new HW portal class, okay? And it's a simplified version. Uh, if you remember, ODBS had ODBS travel uh, to map actor, and this is a much simplified version. Um, I think it's, we're, we're gonna also have more uh, safeties in it and better control. There's still a little bit more to add, but it's working pretty good right now. And so it just has this one method here called travel through portal. And you can see that that basically goes and does all these different checks, make sure we have a latch, make sure we have a player controller, player state, that our character's good. And then it finally goes and sets our, um, this is our latch here, we're setting it to true. And then we stop our movement immediately. We disable our movement, right? So we make sure that they can't move. One of the things we will be adding in the future is that if it fails, we need a location to put them back to that's outside of the overlap. Uh, so that's something we'll be adding in the future. Uh, right now we're calling this player controller show loading screen. We don't actually have the loading screen implemented yet, um, but in the future that'll take care of that. And then finally it, it calls, you know, the familiar get zone server to travel to and sends in our player controller, our mode here, map with fewest players. That's the only one that's supported at this time. There will be more in the future. We're not choosing a world server ID. We're having it choose the world server ID for us. And then we pick the send the zone name, starting location and starting rotation. Let's go back and take a look at that blueprint that inherits from HW portal. You can see it's pretty simple. It just says, okay, when there's an overlap, travel through the portal. Now we'd only be doing this on the server side, but if we go back and look at the code for this, you can see only process portal travel on the server side. So we're handling that behind the scenes. So it doesn't matter here. We don't need to need to handle that here. What I'm trying to do is make the blueprint as simple as possible. Uh, while letting the the HW portal class take care of all the heavy lifting, which is different than what we did in the uh, ODBS travel to map 
actor. And so we're gonna keep this simple. Now we could create additional portals here uh, with different overlapping methods. Um, maybe you don't need a box, maybe you need some other shape. Um, but we can also do things like having switches um, or other methods, anything that needs to trigger a, uh, a change to a new zone, right? And so that's what portals are for, is for connecting those zones. Now let's uh, give it a try here. So um, what I have here, but there's one thing I want to I want to take a look at first. So you may be upgrading. You may be upgrading your um, your ODBS copy for Hub World, right? Because you already have Hub World installed. And so I just want to show you here that what you would do is you would come in here, you go into the SQL scripts, and there's a new SQL script initialized. I did upgrade. I did update the Postgre and the MySQL versions. Hopefully, I got those right. I don't have a setup to be able to test them. I think I did a good job. If not, I apologize. Please let me know. Um, but we'll go here, and I think I already have this open. Yeah, so you open up this initialized SQL. This is for MS, Microsoft SQL. And you'll notice that this script is meant to be run over and over because each one of the times it does an insert, it checks if it's already there, right? So what you can do is you can copy this over into SSMS, find your customer GUID for your Hub World MMO project, paste it in here, and run it and it will not add any duplicate rows. This is the new one here, right? We're adding a south gate zone, right? To the maps table, which in the future will be called zones. And so we're adding that south gate. So you're gonna to wanna to do this first um, before, you can, before you can run this new version. And then once you do that, we can come here and we can go to our Odobus Instance Launcher and we can run .NET Odobus Instant Launcher. Now I wanna, I wanna tell you that there is actually, as of today, there is an error. I'm gonna work on fixing it probably tomorrow. So it may or may not be fixed before this video. Um, but there's actually an error where when we converted from stored procedures to um, not using stored procedures, we left out the fact that when you start up a new, start up or shut down a OBS instance launcher, it's supposed to find all of the zones running on that world server and it's supposed to remove them. So what you're going to have to do temporarily um, and maybe some people have already run into this. You're actually gonna have to keep SQL open and have this delete from map instances where customer GUID equals your customer. Um, assuming you don't have multiple world servers, which hopefully you don't at this point, you're just running locally. And, uh, and you're actually gonna have to manually delete those yourself. So I've had this open here, I did delete them. If you don't do this, you're gonna get weird things are gonna happen. It's not gonna match what you expect. So I started that. There's this one warning about overriding addresses is actually a good thing. This is just so that people didn't have to use HTTPS. Everything else looks good, not getting any other warnings. So I'm gonna come back over here and I am on the login map and I've got this uh, play as standalone. But I wanna show you the portal setup first. So I'm gonna go back to maps and I'm gonna load the Hub World map. Here are the portals. So there's actually two of them that are placed in the world and you can see box portal and box portal two. And this one is for coming from the left to the right. And as you hit it, it will put you somewhere over here, right? And so that zone name, it's you're in hub world zone and you're going to the south gate zone, right? On the other side of the south gate. And I dropped down a empty actor and I got this starting location and I put that in and through experimentation, I found out that all zeros was actually pointing me in the right direction. So that only handles going from the hub world on this side over to Southgate on this side, which means we also have to have a second one that when you're in the Southgate, sometimes these are fun to click. There we go. When you're in Southgate, it will take you back to hub world. So this is when you're coming from the right side and moving to the left side. When you run into that, I found out that the start by dropping down a empty actor, that this was a good starting location. And of course it's zero, was this way for Z, and now this direction is gonna be 180. I put that in and that works. So this is how you can drop this portal into the world. Now, one of the things that we would do uh, and which we will do later is we probably want to put um, invisible walls blocking everywhere else so that there's no possible way that someone can get out of a zone uh, without being in that zone. And that'll be important later because what will happen sometimes is we'll only load the world partition underneath the zone meaning that if they were to get out here, they would just fall through the world. Because even though they'll see the ground on the client, the server won't have it and the server handles collision. 
So one of the great things about how Unreal Engine works is that even if the server doesn't load a section of the map, the client still does. So this is great. This means we can have giant, huge maps, 20 kilometers, and the server can load a really small section of the map that's just for that zone. And yet the client still sees the whole 20 kilometer map and thinks, wow, this is cool. I can see the whole world. Um, and so that's, that's one of the great things about that, but we're probably going to have to use invisible walls just to make sure that there's no possible way that someone can get out. We'll do that in a future video. So now let's give it a try. We're going to go back to the login and here we go. We're going to start this up. I have character set up on test 68, uh, not dart 68 at test.com. Login, clear this log. I'm going to bring this up. I'll show it to you as it loads. So what will happen here is that as we connect, it will send a message here telling us that it's going to load up a certain uh, map and then it's going to load it on a certain point port. It should start on 7778. So we're going to hit connect and you'll see a black box start up. This is the Unreal Engine server instance. This is the actual instance. Um, I have log turned on, so it'll show it. Otherwise it would just load headless and it would just run in the background and you wouldn't know it's there. During development, this is nice. You can see the log. So we got loaded in. I'm just going to move this over to another screen. And here we are loaded in. So now we're going to test out the portal. We're going to run toward it. And another server instance is starting up. So now we have two zone server instances and we can see here, there was the first one that loaded on 778 and there was the next one that loaded on 779. And so now we can move back and forth between them. And now it's not loading, not loading new ones. We're just walking between them. And I've even tested that I can even, you can even do like a, uh, a dash toward it and it'll stop me. So that uh, as soon as it overlaps, we uh, we get that. What we would probably do just to make sure is when we put those invisible walls, we'd actually stick it between the portals to make sure that even if someone figured out some way to shoot through too far, that, um, that the invisible wall would catch them. So something we can definitely improve in the future. Uh, as well as in a future video, we will talk about loading screens. Loading screens are actually a little bit complicated because there's actually two of them. There's one loading screen while you're waiting to go to the new map. And then there's a second loading screen while it's waiting to build your character on the new map. And so uh, as we go back and forth, we'll actually need those two pieces and, and have those work together. So that's not in there yet, but that is something we will do in the future. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The Open World Server and Hub World MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.